Hi, I'm Tealish and you're watching Coffee and Clicks. If you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe and click on the link tree found in the description of this video for links to my media content. Enjoy and don't forget, wake up and smell the clicks. Hi, I'm Tealish and you're watching Coffee and Clicks. Welcome to another Team Build with Tealish video. Uh, Team Build with Tealish is a series where we build around a certain figure. Uh, it could be a more of a competitive meta build or it could be a more of a casual build. It really depends. Uh, you know, and you know, just I'm just thinking that the, the movie Thor Love and Thunder just came out. And so today we're going to be building around Party Thor from War of the Realms. Or actually, no, he's from Disney Plus, Party Thor. Um, and so uh, I'm really excited to build around this figure. He's a pretty cool figure. Um, let's take a look at what he does. Um, today's build is going to be a plus seven as guardian slash celebrity. Really, it's a Spider-Man family theme team, um, but we're incorporating as guardian and celebrity keyworded figures on the team. Um, but it is a plus seven Spider-Man family theme team using Party Thor, uh, focusing on his ability to uh, give out action tokens. So it's kind of a lockdown team. Um, if you guys, if if, uh, if you're watching and you like to play that style of play where you're locking locking your opponent down, this might be a good team for you to try to use. Let's take a look at Party Thor and see what he does. So Party Thor is a rare. <clears throat> he is from the Disney Plus set. He's Disney Plus um, set number is 030. Um, and he has six range with a single target. He's 50 points. He's eight, eight speed with running shot, 12 attack with a special power, 18 defense with invincible, and two damage with shape change. Um, he has a trait, willpower but succeeds on a four through six. When Party Thor uses it and succeeds, after resolutions, you may heal him one click. So, you know, he can keep going because he can keep willpower. You take a token off yourself, so he can keep going and uh, possibly take a token off himself every turn if you keep rolling that four through six. Um, then he's got the attack power, which is really key here. Um, you need a timeout because you're a party pooper. Um, Pulse Wave. When Party Thor uses it after resolutions, you may give all hit characters an action token. So, you know, the idea here is you want to line up the rest of your team outside of the range of his pulse wave, and then you want to just go in with Thor and keep pulse waving your opponent's entire team over and over again, as many turns as you can, and um, keep giving your opponent action tokens, because uh, all, the, all hit characters give it an action token. And so that's within range of three because Pulse Wave cuts your range in half. So Thor has a range of six. Um, so, um, you know, you get pul Party Thor in there and just uh, start Pulse Waving. So, uh, you know, he is a pretty tough figure to KO as well because he's got that Invincible and he's got Shape Change. So he's not going to be easy for 50 points to get rid of. Um, so he is going to be a nuisance for sure. Okay, so let's see what he pairs with in our plus seven theme team. <clears throat> uh, the next figure on the team is going to be uh, Loki from Disney Plus, Disney Plus set number fifty one. Um, he is um, he's the the giant frost frost giant, the chase Loki from from the Disney Plus set. Um, he has Mystic's team ability. He's 75 points. He's got three range with two targets. Um, that two targets is going to be important, the fact that he has two targets. 
He has uh, 10 speed with charge, 12 attack with quake, which is also important because he can multi-target with quake, um, 18 defense with invulnerable, and 4 damage with perplex. Okay, And that perplex is going to be key as well because you can perplex up or down Thor's range if you need to, or his speed if you need to, to get him within range of your opponent. Get, get him exactly the right place to pulse wave, to, to position that pulse wave. Okay, um, so but I mean he's got good stats. Loki's got great stats. He's uh, he's got the twelve attack. He's got four damage. Um, he has a trait. I wish I wish. And so he's as guardian. So so far he's staying with the theme of Thor. They're both as guardian. Um, his trait. I wish I wish. Uh, steel energy. When Loki hits after resolutions, give each hit character an action token. So that paired with Thor's ability to give out action tokens. Um, you're giving out lots of action tokens, right? Because um, Loki can multi-target as well. So when you charge in and hit two multiple targets, you give each hit character an action token, not not just one hit character. And it says each hit character. So um, that could be that's potentially a lot of action tokens right there. Um, then he also has another trait, and this one's really key for Loki that makes him good with Party Thor. Um, I couldn't possibly tell you it'll ruin the magic. Plasticity and adjacent opposing characters can only clear one action token instead of two. So, um, so once Loki charges in and he hits an opposing character, it, I mean, if you didn't use his giant reach, because he's he's giant, he's, he's actually giant sized, so you can hit multiple characters with giant reach too. Um, but if you are if you happen to be adjacent to your opponent character, um, they can only clear one action token when they go to clear. So ideally, in the ideal situation, you're giving all your opponent's characters action tokens multiple times so that now they have two action tokens. And then when it's their turn and they have to clear, they can only take one off of them. So now they're just going back down to one action token. And then you just rinse and repeat and you keep hitting them and giving them action tokens, lock, locking them down. Plus, on, in addition to that, he has plasticity, so that makes him really difficult to deal with. Okay, so that is Loki right there, and he works very well, and he's mystics, so you put him next to somebody with that plasticity, and they have to deal with him, and they even if they do get their action tokens um, cleared off and they get some attacks on Loki, they're going to have to deal with his mystics, and they're going to take damage. So... Um, that's a dangerous combo, Loki and Party Thor. Let's look at the next figure. So we want to make this a Spider-Man family theme team. So we're going to need two key figures in order to do that. So first is Mary Jane. And this is, uh, um, Mary Jane. Uh, they don't have his, her picture here, but it's the 40, um, cause she has a 60 point and a 40 point line. We're going to look at Mary Jane at 40 points. Um, Mary Jane is from set, the War of the Realms set, um, Avengers War of the Realms, set number 38, and uh, she's 40 points. She has six range with two targets. She has a Spider-Man family uh, team ability, so she can copy something else. Um, <clears throat> she has uh, running shot, seven speed with running shot. She's a flyer, so she can carry somebody around. She's 11 attack with energy explosion. 17 defense with toughness and three damage with a special and her her damage special is when Mary Jane hits with a rage attack choose a hit target until your next turn that character has immobile and modifies attack and defense minus one that's just an that's just like icing on the cake because that's uh that also is kind of a lockdown tactic so it makes your team even more annoying right um, but her traits are really important for this team because or her first trait, my kind of ally, allies. When establishing theme teams, characters on your starting force with the as guardian or deity keyword gain the Spider-Man family keyword. So now um, Party Thor and Loki that we just mentioned are now Spider-Man family, okay? And uh, also there, she's got another trait, call in help from the Spider-Verse. When Mary Jane hits an opposing character, if no other character has been placed this turn after resolutions, you may roll a d6. Three through six, place another friendly character with the Spider-Man family keyword adjacent. So that also will work. You know, if you hit with Mary Jane first, then um, 
you can take somebody else on your team and place them adjacent and then they can do something. So that's that could be pretty cool too. All right, so this Mary Jane, she's mainly on the team in order to get um, other figures on the team to make it a theme team, okay? So then the next figure we're gonna look at is Marvella. So we've had Party Thor, Loki, um, the Frost Giant Loki, and Mary Jane. Now we're gonna look at Marvella. Marvella is from Spider-Man Venom Absolute Carnage. She's set number 38, she's a rare. Um, she's 15 points, she's just an excellent figure, Marvella. Um, her trait says, so she's got a, she's got a special power that says um, her, her speed special power is sidestep and flying, but only if Marvella has no action tokens. So if she has no action tokens, she can carry somebody around, which is really cool. Um, and she's got empower too. So she, so she starts with, she starts with that sidestep and, uh, flying, but with only if she has no action tokens, she starts with that special, um, as her speed power, she's got incapacitate with nine attack, um, 16 defense with barrier. And that's really important too, just in case you need barrier. Um, and she also has, uh, one damage with empower. Okay. Um, so if you're doing a close attack, let's say with Loki or something like that, um, you can use her empower to up that damage by one. Okay. But her really, really, she's mainly on the team for her trait. Peter, you can be an extra in my superhero movie. Um, when establishing theme teams, characters on your force with a celebrity keyword gain the Spider-Man family keyword. So now we're going to be able to cheat celebrity keyworded figures onto this team. And so we're going to see some really cool ideas for that as well. <clears throat> All right, so now let's take a look at the next figure, which is um, Rocket Raccoon. This is um, a chase from War of the Realms, from Avengers War of the Realms. Um, she, he is 50 points, and he has 7 range with 3 targets. He's got the Guardians of the Galaxy team ability, which means that opposing effects cannot reduce his um, his combat values. Okay, I believe that's what it is. Uh, the Guardians team ability. Um, 50 points, 7 range with 3 targets. He's got 8 speed with running shot, 12 attack with a special, 18 defense with super senses, and 3 damage with a special. Um, he also fits in because he's an Asgardian. Okay. So he fits on this team because he's an Asgardian. Um, and he's he's really good as a lockdown figure. So he's going to really help out with Party Thor and Loki and make this team really a dedicated lockdown team. Um, he has a trait, too cold for you, furless wonders, plasticity, opposing characters within four squares and line of fire. Consider Rocket Raccoon adjacent for movement purposes. So that can be really annoying. Um, and the plasticity, you know, Loki has plasticity. Rocket Raccoon has plasticity. So your your opponent's, your opposing team is going to have a hard time like moving around and maneuvering around your, your figures to uh, because all your figures are going to have plasticity here. So um, then uh, another attack power that Rocket Raccoon has is Winters Come Early for You, Energy Explosion. When Rocket Raccoon uses it after resolutions, give each hit character an action token. So you're giving out even more action tokens. So you have so many chances to give your opponent action tokens. They're going to just have action tokens the whole game. So it's, it's going to be, um, you know, I guess a little bit mean, I guess. I don't know if this is a mean team um, to play. I mean, your, your opponent has to have a sense of humor, I guess. Um, but it's a, it's a, I mean, this is a lockdown team. So that's, that's what it's all about. Um, but I mean, it's an interesting idea. I mean, if you want to play party Thor, that's, that's the kind of figure he is. He's kind of a lockdown figure party Thor. Okay. Cause he, cause he gives out those action tokens. So that's what this team is based around. Okay. Um, and then his dam he's got super senses and then his damage power is what it's, it's just a snowball outwit once per turn for all characters with this effect. When Rocket Raccoon uses Outwit after resolutions, deal the targeted character one damage if it has one or more action tokens. So 
now you can give out free damage. So that's always good, right? And the outwit is always good. So you're not only are you getting outwit, but after you can use outwit um, to deal damage, which is crazy. It's a really, really great ability. Okay, so um, that, that Racker Raccoon is really good. Um, and he's just going to add to your team. Okay. Um, the next figure you're going to have on this team. So, so far we have Party Thor. Let's take a look at what we have so far. Party Thor. We have Frost Giant Loki. There we go. Then we have Mary Jane from War of the Realms, the rare. Then we have Marvella, also a rare, from Spider-Man Venom Carnage. Um, then we have Rocket Raccoon. So that makes five figures so far. All right, the next figure on our team is going to be Sicarian Iron Man. Sicarian Iron Man is a chase from uh, Disney Plus, and it's probably my favorite of the figures from Disney Plus. I mean, also the Scarlet Witch is really good. She's really good. Um, Agatha Harkness is really good. They're actually, a lot of the, a lot of the figures in that set are just amazing, um, but. I really like Sicarian Iron Man. He's 50 points. Um, and he, I mean, his dial seems pretty bare, but when you really look at his traits and his powers, um, he's not, he's kind of hard to deal with. So um, he's, he's a good figure. He's a really good figure, solid figure. So he's got six range with single target. He's got 50, he's 50 points. Um, he's got 10 speed, 10 attack, 17 defense, willpower, which means he can take tokens off himself. Um, and he's got two damage with a special, okay? Um, his special is Outwit and Perplex. So if that damage power is Outwit and Perplex. So now his trait is what really makes him great. Um, I've worked with scraps before. At the beginning of the game, you may generate up to three standard objects anywhere on the map, at least 50 square, at least five squares from one another. When Sakarian Iron Man picks up a standard object, you may instead place it on his card if less than two objects are on his card. So he can ha have a max of two objects on his card. Um, Sakarian Iron Man modifies his combat values by plus one for each standard object on his card. And at the beginning of your turn, you may choose one standard speed or attack power for each object on his card to use until your next turn. So, um, and then it also says when Sakarian Iron Man would be dealt damage from an opponent's attack, you may remove a standard object from his card to take one unavoidable damage instead. So he gets plus one combat values. Let's say he has two objects in his card. So that would give him plus two to all his combat values. So he would have 12 speed, 12 attack, 19 defense, four damage, and eight range. So that's crazy right there. Then because he has two objects on his card, he can also pick two powers at the beginning of his turn. Any combination of speed or attack powers, he can pick two. He wants to pick Charge Flurry, he wants to pick Hypersonic and Pensai. He can pick Hypersonic and Energy Explosion. Any two powers that go together that are speed and attack, he can pick them. Poison and Plasticity, he can pick those if he wants to. Um, and then uh, also, on the top of that, because he has two objects on his card, um, every time he takes damage from an attack, somebody hits him, um, instead of taking the full damage, he can just remove one object and take one damage. He choose to take one damage, un unavoidable. So uh, that makes him extra hard to KO because if he's got two objects on his card, um, you have to hit him like three times in order to KO him. And then he can still go back and pick up more objects to make that even more difficult. Plus he's got Outwit and Perplex on his damage power. So he'll always have those if he's on his first four clicks. Um, you know, he, plus he's got willpower. He's just crazy for 50 points. He's a really good figure. Um, <clears throat> if you don't happen to have Sakarian Iron Man and you want to substitute it with something else, there are a lot of good, other good options because this is, we are cheating him onto this team because he is a celebrity. He has the celebrity keyword. And Marvella allows us to cheat him onto this team um, because he's got the celebrity keyword. So there's a lot of other great celebrity figures for 50 points or less under um, in in the Disney Plus set that just came out. Um, one that one suggestion I would make would maybe be uh, Wanda Maximoff, the uncommon 
Um, Wanda Maximoff is really good for 45 points. She is. She gives 19 defend. She's got prov. She's got mind control. She's got a stop click. She's got mystics. Um, so that Wanda Maximoff's really good. Not as offensive, but um, she would be a good choice if you wanted to substitute um, Sakarian Iron Man, just in case you don't have that figure. Okay. Um, and then um, what would go next on this team? So we have that's six figures so far. We have Party Thor, Loki, Mary Jane, Marvella, Rocket Raccoon, Sakarian Iron Man. Our, six, our seventh figure or last figure would be Mary Jane Watson. Okay. Uh, Mary Jane Watson is from Spider-Man Venom Carnage. Spider-Man Venom Absolute Carnage. She's set number 14. She's a common. Um, she's just probably the best common um, in that set for sure. Um, she's really good. Uh, for 15 points, you get um, Spider-Man team ability, zero range, one target, um, sidestep. Um, she's autonomous, which means she can act um, without counting against your actions Actions for that turn. Um She's got 9 attack, 17 defense with energy energy shield deflection, 1 damage with shape change. Um, but what really makes her great is her trait or her traits. Um, she does have a secret identity trait. If you don't know what that is, um, it says when Mary Jane Watson would be KO'd, you may instead replace her with a secret identity character with a listed name on click nine number 9. Um, this game, when that replacement is KO'd, it scores this character's points and an additional 25 points. So her secret identities are Iron Man, Marvella, and She Venom. Uh, they're very specific to that set, to the Spider Man Venom Absolute Carnage set. So you may want to have like um, She Venom or um, on your sideline that you could um, usually, most people use She Venom um, to uh, sideline her on the outs, you know, just in case Mary Jane gets KO'd. Uh, you could use her secret identity. Um, but her main trait that makes her really good is um, this trait, need a distraction tiger? Don't forget you're married to a movie star. Um, power, if no friendly bystanders named paparazzi are on the map, roll a d6, generate a number of paparazzi bystanders equal to half the result in an unoccupied square, um, in unoccupied squares within four squares. So um, these are bystanders that you can generate um, with uh, Mary Jane, if you roll, let's say roll a six or a five, um, you get three paparazzi bystanders that you could just generate it within four squares and they can go and tie up people and, uh, make it more, even more of a lockdown team. Um, this is what the paparazzi look like. They have sidestep, um, autonomous, 10 attack with, uh, incapacitate and 15 defense. So um, 10 attack incapacitate is really good actually um, to even further lock down your opponent and possibly get action tokens. Um, makes this team really um, action token forward, I guess. Um, very, it, it's all, this team's all about action tokens. That's that's what this, uh, that's what the team is all about. Um, even um, Sakarian Iron Man <clears throat> could be used as a lockdown figure because um, we have five points left and we're going to give him the Cloak of Levitation. So for the five points, you know, for, to make it a 300 point team, we're going to give Clark, um, Sakarian Iron Man, we're going to equip him with the Cloak of Levitation, which gives him flight, plasticity, and sidestep. So now you have three figures on your team that have plasticity. Um, and they're, they're, they're probably the, the main attackers on your team other than Party Thor. Loki, um, Rocket Raccoon, and Sakarian Iron Man all have plasticity. So you can really lock people up, um, give them action tokens, lock them up with plasticity. Um, and uh, have them, you know, if you get Loki, base, base, base Loki, tie Loki, somebody up with Loki, then they can't clear. They can only clear one action token per turn. So um, that's the whole team. Um, the only the only downside to this team is that there is no leadership. Um, I really couldn't find a really good option for leadership when I was trying to make this team. Um, the only thing that I could you could do if you happen to have the um, if you happen to have the spirit of the game bystander created by Matthew Ventura, 
um, which was an excellent bystander that he created because he won um, he won the Scott Porter charity event from from last year. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and that 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 bystander we can take a look at spirit of the game. If you wanted to take away Mary Jane Watson with the, with the paparazzi tokens, she's 15 points. And then if you took away the cloak of levitation, um, you could put for for 20 points. You could put spirit of the game, which would be kind of like leadership, um, because I mean it, it's not exactly leadership, but spirit of the game says uh, has a damage power that says if spirit of the game is on a theme team at the beginning of your turn action total plus one. So if you took away the cloak and Mary Jane Watson, that would be 20 points. You could put on Spirit of the Game. Um, and then you could take away, if you wanted to take away Sakari and Iron Man, you could put on, you could you could put uh, Wanda Maximoff and the, um, maybe the, maybe the uh, Captain Carter's shield to give her like a, a, a super defend, 19 defend, because that would be 50 points right there. Um, so you could do that. That would be like an alternate way that you could um, make this team if you have the Spirit of the Game token bystander. But I, I know not everybody has the Spirit of the Game. So that's why I wanted to... Um, oh, here's the Spirit of the Game again. I'll show you the Spirit of the Game. Um, I know not everybody has this. So I didn't want to include it on my team for today's team build. Just because I, I it's, it's, a limited, um, it's a limited edition. Uh, bystander, but if you do happen to have it, you could you could flex it onto your team because it is uh, a way of gaining four actions per turn instead of three. Because uh, as I have this team right now, um, it's only three actions per turn because it's uh, there's no leadership. But that's it. That's that's the party Thor team um, team party time party time excellent. So I mean, we can take a look at it party t party Thor. Is the first figure Loki, Mary Jane, Marvella, Rocket Raccoon, Sakarian Iron Man, Mary Jane Watson. And the Cloak of Levitation. And that is your plus seven Spider-Man family theme team centered around Party Thor. <clears throat> if you've enjoyed this Team Build with Tealish video, please give me a like and a subscribe. Um, you know, I'm looking for more subscribers. Uh, I hope that you enjoy my content and you hit that bell, bell for notifications so you can be alerted when more content comes out. Uh, I hope you enjoy all my Heroclix content. You can look on my channel for more um, team builds and games and uh, interviews with, with players in the community. So I interview, I typically interview players in the community, especially when they win big tournaments or, or um, things like that. So I'm, I'm always adding new content to the channel. I hope you, I hope you enjoy it. And don't forget, wake up and smell the clicks.